Attorney General and Honorable Minister, Mr. Ayaz Sayed Kayum, the Chair of Fiji Electricity Authority, Mr. Dakshesh Patel, His Excellency, the French Ambassador, and his good wife. Please, you are welcome to FEA, EFL. <coughs> People still use the word FEA. Sometimes when I say EFL, they say, what's that? <laughs> so we are still, the people are still getting used to it, but FEA naturally is very popular because it has been in existence for 50 years. So welcome to EFL uh, on this auspicious occasion this afternoon. Uh, the minister is here to make the announcement of the performance pay for the employees of EFL. And without taking further time, I will now invite our chair to welcome the chief guest. <coughs> Thank you. The Honorable Minister and Attorney General, Honorable Ayasia Kiyu. Your Excellency, Madam, welcome to EFL. And of course, all the members of EFL and the CEO. Thank you for joining us once again to recognize the loyal and committed staff members of uh, EFL. And we are delighted again to see that the Minister, as usual, has made himself available to be part of this uh, uh, occasion. It is, a, it is a third year in a row that EFL has been issuing performance-based bonuses and which have been being achieved well over 95 percent. It is a testimony to members of EFL team from all the departments for meeting its uh, performance target, its, uh, <coughs> its uh, KPIs, and also ensuring that we are lifting the bar each time. Now, EFL, uh, I was uh, given the uh, an honor to speak recently, albeit over Skype, not that uh, convenient, but I did make an attempt to deliver a, uh, a viewpoint in the recent uh, Chamber of Commerce conference that was held in Suva, as the minister was one of the chief guests. Now, one of the issues was that where EFL, EFL is going to be in 25 years. Now, when we look at 25 years, we look at where, or not 25 years, 2025 rather, where we will be. And it is important that we must recognize that we are in the era where things will be changing very fast. We are in the situation where we will be seeing new changes taking place and transformation taking place there will be multiple technologies coming into and affecting the way we do our business, indeed, the way we will live our life. Where EFL will position itself and how EFL will position itself will be really the significance of its existence. We will determine our future course of direction by how well we can innovate, change, and accommodate changes, and keep on going on. And those will be the key points of our organization to exist and success will determine on those basis we will grow if we are able to innovate and change we must keep on challenging our uh, our 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 goals to achieve new new goals and keep on jumping the next hurdle there is a theory or at least a claim but that by 2025 every new car that will be manufactured in the world will be electric motor vehicles in other words it will be run by electricity. It's a bold statement. By 2030, they predict the oil prices is going to crash to $25 a barrel. Today, it is at $75 a barrel. This is all the transformation taking place. 2020s will be the most disruptive decade in the mankind, in the history of mankind, as being claimed. And this transformational will not be a gradual change. It will be a quantum leap. Autonomous cars, Vehicles, driverless vehicles, where we will not have drivers driving the cars, electric vehicles, all will become a reality of this transformation process. When AT&T commissioned the McKenzie Consulting Company back in 1990s 
to determine how many of them are going to have this mobile phone in their lives by 2000. And these are the smartest kids who are all the Ivy League students. I predicted it will be 90,000 by 2000. And the number was 109 million. So this is the sort of changes that we are going to see. A change that will absolutely impose on us and how well we position EFL in this changing environment will be the point of difference for us. And indeed, we will determine whether we exist as an organization or not. Renewable energy is at the forefront. It is going to be changing our life. Renewable energy will be the future and we must embrace it. Microgrids will become a reality. In other words, poles and lines will be thing of the past. These are the sort of changes we will be seeing. How well we embrace it today to confront those changes in future will be the difference between our success and failure. And hence, it is fitting that the, His Excellency, the French Ambassador, is here with us. As you will all know that we have recently signed a memorandum of understanding with a very reputable French renewable energy company called Okuo Energy. And we will together with them form a joint venture company to expand in the various renewable energy uh, generation activities. Not only in Fiji, but hopefully within other countries in the region. But this is a, just a quick snapshot about what we want to do and I just wanted to share this thought and we will discuss more in many other occasions, I'm sure, in many other workshops. But I'd like to take this opportunity now to welcome the Honourable Minister. I must say and I must acknowledge that um, it is an absolute pleasure to work with the Minister. Uh, the level of support and trust he has given us has been unparalleled. The government has not once interfered with the processes of the uh, EFL's board and we have been very privileged to have such a supportive uh, 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 government and uh, the ministry to give us that level of motivation and independence to execute our corporate plans. And uh, we are grateful for that. So, and I say that uh, uh, very genuinely because uh, I certainly wouldn't have enjoyed my chairmanship if uh, things were kept on imposing. So I say that quite genuinely. So thank you very much. Uh, Minister, thank you so much for coming. I would please like to call you upon to uh, uh, do the honor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Excellency, and uh, uh, your good wife, the chair of uh, EFL, the CEO of EFL, and of course the staff of uh, EFL. I will have been like a very good afternoon to you all. Um, as you know, that we've been doing now this three years in a row, it's becoming a bit of a habit. So let's keep that habit up. Um, you know, back in uh, 2009, I had mentioned to the CEO then that we, need, we must move away from the antiquated way of dealing with uh, rewarding staff. And that is, you know, sort of simple things like COLA. We need to have performance uh, assessed rewards for individuals. So today, uh, EFL is making a payout of uh, $1.9 million that, of course, will be shared by 792 staff members of EFL. Now, this is unprecedented. I know in the days prior to 2007, they used to have, you know, what they call bonuses paid out, but they only paid out to the senior management. In fact, the ordinary staff did not get paid uh, those types of bonuses. So we have that now in place. Uh, and of course, you all get individual uh, you know, assessments on that. It's based on your individual performance and also the assessment based on your actual, um, your little, your SBAs, your service uh, business activities, the different groupings. So you'll be getting there, and I think it's quite an enormous achievement on your part. Of course, none of this could have been achieved without your individual input. The whole idea is to have a collaborative uh, you know, effort by uh, the staff and, of course, the management and indeed the board. As the chair highlighted, you know, it is very, very important. I see your staff here from Latoka that are also listening in. It's very, very important to ensure that we understand the business that you are in. The story I want to tell you is also mentioned, for example, of Baker McKenzie, etc., about mobile phones. They weren't able to see the future. You know, many of you would have grown up with a company called Kodak. Kodak was the film that you used, you know, when you took photographs. Kodak was the camera that you, I mean, Kodak film was what you used. And you went and printed photographs, you used, bought the film, and you went and printed it. 
when the uh, technology of digital photographs came out, and uh, which we all use now, nobody uses those film that you take out and you then print it and you you know put under water and print photographs. <laughs> Codec management decided that you know it's, um, nobody's going to take this up. Today, Codec no longer exists. It's shut down because they weren't able to see the future. They did not adopt the technology, and Codec is a company shut down because everybody else adopted digital uh, phone, uh, digital uh, sort of photographs. So I, another issue, of course, I want to highlight is today, all nearly 80 to 90 percent, I understand close to 90 percent, of all your prepaid customers pay through M-Pesa or the digital uh, platform. Only 10 percent actually use those old machines. It goes to show that people in the rural areas have also adopted the technology. In order to stay relevant, we need to ensure that we need to adopt technology. We need to be able to improve our business processes. Government at the moment, for example, is working with the ADB and World Bank and various other organizations to, for example, bring in electric buses into Fiji. When you bring in electric buses, they need electric charging stations. You need electric charging stations, need electricity. You need to provide that electricity. There will be a demand <coughs> for more electricity usage. So which means essentially you need to produce more. You need to have a stable infrastructure to be able to produce more electricity. What are your sources of energy? Where will you get it from? Are you actually putting in enough uh, you know, resources into adopting the technology but also putting in infrastructure? You don't have a redundancy line from Nandari Batu uh, into Suva and into Bunda. You need to have a redundancy line. One line goes out, the other one should be able to pick up on it. This is how you run a modern nation state. You need to make the investments. You need to keep your customers live with electricity. You yourself need it. Of course, there are many uh, parts of Fiji that still don't have electricity. This year, government is expending $50 million in the 2018-2019 budget to, in fact, put in place, uh, get people connected to the grid, extend the grid, or you have standalone electric electricity systems. We have, of course, at the moment, uh, the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation is working together with the efforts of the Honorable Prime Minister as President of COP23, VO Island. We're now putting in a, a three-year partnership with the EFL and, of course, the, uh, the stakeholders themselves, the villagers, and uh, the Sanajais, which is a private company, to get them to have a standalone grid in respect of access to electricity. These people are only a few uh, meters away from the mainland, Viti Levu. They have not had water. Now they actually have water. They do not have electricity. Now they're going to get electricity. So they can actually enjoy the modern day amenities that you and I enjoy living in Viti Levu where you have actually electricity uh, connection to the grid. So these are some of the situations that we need to be able to understand. So we need everybody's collaborative effort, not just the, uh, the chairman and the board, for example, developing this relationship, which we hope to be a wonderful relationship with ECHO, which is a French company well renowned for its renewable energy technology and capacity and indeed investment in that area but also to be able to work collaboratively with all the stakeholders in Fiji, including yourselves. And as we've seen, that if you get a high level of collaboration within an organization, you get a high level of reward. You're able to maintain sustainable practices, but also sustainable business processes that will ensure that everybody that's within the organization will not only get better rewards in terms of monetary rewards, but be able to have good career paths. We want people to be trained, highly trained. There's a lot of technology, a lot of business processes that you don't know yet, that we need to know. Even as government, we need to know. This is why, for example, government has, in this year's budget, offered new scholarships for civil servants and non-civil servants to actually do a PhD, to do masters. So, you know, your staff at this uh, organization can also apply for that. You may have somebody in a particular area that needs to, you know, upgrade the skill sets. So they can also apply, it's not just civil servants. So we are working, you know, collaboratively to ensure that uh, we uh, get you rewarded, get the organization reward, uh, rewarded, and the company also benefits too. And I'm also very excited about the fact that the uh, EFL board has decided to work together with the French company to not just look at investments in Fiji, but also outside Fiji. A case in point is ATH, Amalgamated Telecom Holdings, that owns Telecom, that owns Vodafone. They also now have business interests in the region. They're now in Samoa. They collaborate, they bought a mobile phone company there. They actually have collaborations in uh, business ventures in uh, Solomon Islands, looking at the opportunities there. And even you know, further than that. So there's obviously an opportunity for a good Fijian company, good management practices, good business processes, 
adherence to ensuring that we don't have corruption, we have high levels of transparency, to be able to do a JV with a French company and actually be able to get business interests outside of Fiji. Enormous opportunities. Fiji, of course, is the hub of the South Pacific. We are the most connected country in the South Pacific. We fly to every single continent that rims the Pacific Ocean, except South America. We need to take advantage of that. We are actually on the cusp of moving on to a very high level of economic growth, even more so than what we have had. We need to take advantage of that. And our ability to take advantage of that depends on our ability as a country, as individuals, as organizations, to soak in this new technology, to look at new ways of thinking, and if we're able to adopt that, then of course you will have individually a lot more prosperous lives, a lot more prosperity in the country and overall everybody benefits. So with those introductory remarks and concluding remarks, I'd like to also uh, thank uh, again the chairman of the board. He, as I've always said, he brings a, a very new level and heightened level of energy and enthusiasm. And of course a business acumen that is uh, unprecedented, I would say, within uh, EFL. Of, of course also your, your CEO. And uh, thank you again, once, uh, once again, for your hard work, for your collaboration. We look forward to you working a lot more closely with your management, with your board, so EFL can actually become a significant uh, company, not just in Fiji, but indeed in the region. And we must take advantage of the position that Fiji has. Thank you, Ambassador, for availing yourself, and a good work for being here. We look forward to much better uh, collaboration with the uh, ECHO, and uh, for the mutual benefit of both our, of both, both our countries. Naka, and have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just have one more uh, small thing to finish. Now, first, I forgot to mention, um, I just want to share, because this is best owed to you all here, and uh, whilst the minister is here, I may say this. Uh, uh, this is a chart, which you can't see, unfortunately, we can't, uh, if you can... Uh, okay, here is it. Uh, this, okay. This is just to show to you that you are the IT. If you look at it, we are the lowest energy cost in Oceania. And mind you, we have not had energy price increase for the last eight years. If anything, there was a reduction. And in spite of that, we have been sustaining ourselves and been able to declare dividends for the first time in the history. This is best owed to you all, so thank you very much. The other thing I wanted to mention is that we have embarked on a discussion on a visionary uh, project where we'll set up a center of excellence for renewable energy in the South Pacific, where we will provide opportunity for the youths and the young generation of this country to participate in tomorrow's technology. This will be the first initiative in the Pacific of its kind. With the blessing of minister, we'll be able to invest resourcefully into that project with the help of European Investment Bank and of course French government hopefully through your French based company who are all going to be participating in it and are eager to set this up where we'll be teaching solar technology, wind farm and all these things, setting up apprentices and exporting the know-how and the knowledge throughout the Pacific, creating employment and this is the initiative that the, 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 the ministry had given us to be innovative and come up with the idea so this is the first project we embarked on sir just for your knowledge, as well as we will put the full proposal in due course. Now, I have the most important thing to do is to... Uh, yeah, can I say something? Uh, as also announced in the budget, you would have heard that we have said that any uh, business that invests uh, in research and development in the area of ICT and also renewable energy will get a 250% tax deduction. So if your company invests in uh, research and development in the area of renewable energy, we of course include solar and various other renewable energy sources, the company will be able to get 250% tax deduction, which means essentially you pay less tax, which means more profits for you and more bonuses. Wonderful. <laughs> there you go, there you go. It, it, it is an exciting time. I think we are living in a really, really exciting time. And I'm so enthused with future. I'm absolutely enthused and I mean that because we've got so many new things to do, so many exciting things to do. I want everyone to just challenge and be part of it and we'll create that environment. Trust me, you will create that environment for everyone to participate. Now, I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of the Minister and we like to give a small, small token of our appreciation on behalf of EFL to the Minister. Uh, please.
first time getting gift from the hotel. <laughs> so I, I, I better open it up to see what it is. Sure, sure. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 